Hey everyone, AJ here from Whole Latte Love. Now, last week I posted a video showcasing Della Corte's commercial espresso machines at the Coffee Fest San Antonio trade show. Off the show floor, the event featured a number of training workshops and educational seminars for its attendees. One of those seminars was given by Della Corte coffee pro Fabrizio Sencion Ramirez. Aside from his work with Della Corte, Fabrizio has built an extensive resume over his 19 years in the coffee industry, including winning Mexico's National Barista Championship twice, placing second at the World Barista Championship, and co-founding a roastery, a restaurant, and several coffee shops in his home city of Guadalajara, Mexico. Big thanks to Fabrizio for allowing me to attend, record, and post his presentation in full. So sit back and enjoy Temperature and Flow, Perfecting Extractions for Roast and Origin. Hello everyone, thank you for attending. Um, so yes, this is our first show after probably more than one and a half years. So I'm very excited about it. Um, I've been in coffee for maybe 20 years now. Uh, in, I think I started everything backwards. We started brewing coffee without a lot of knowledge. And then we, now we are super close to the producers. I come from Mexico, so Mexico is a producer coffee country. Um, now we roast coffee and we are focusing mainly on specialty grade coffees, which is very difficult to buy because we need to fight with uh, people from all over the world to get the best of the crop and to keep it for local consumption. Um, sometimes I need to pay in dollars the coffee that I, I brew in Mexico. But anyway, we managed to have uh, truly gems and truly uh, origins. Um, so the speak of today, it's going to be mainly about two specific topics. Um, one of them is brewing temperature, and the other one it's probably the most interesting one, and it's flow rate or flow profiling. Um, of course, everything is focusing on espresso. Um, but there are some things that can work for a general coffee infusion. Um, so I've been an ambassador for Dalla Corte, which is uh, espresso, espresso professional coffee equipment from Milan in Italy um, for the last uh, 10 years. And I've, I've been very lucky to be part of most of the recent technology changes that they've been through, such as thermal stability, such as flow rate control, um, and multi-boiler system. So it's been, it's been a very interesting journey working with Dalla Corte, and uh, especially to be able to play with the brand new machines and to really understand what's going on with the coffee inside of them. Um, so Dalla Corte, it's a still small company based in Baranzate, uh, just a few kilometers from Milan. Um, and the main focus of Dalla Corte, it's, uh, and, and, and one of the key signatures, I would say, it's uh, everything it's made and brought from Italy, like every single cable, every single piece, it's from Italy. They are very patriots on that, and I think it's worth it. Uh, especially all the technology, software, and, and like heavy, robust equipment. Um, and they have two signatures for me that were really relevant. The thermal stability the equipment has, even on the rush and on the full, like if, if you have a queue of coffee lovers, you won't have problems with the, with the coffee machine. And the other one, it's they use a 54 millimeter portafilter that was not normal in, back in the days. Normally you use a 58 uh, portafilter. And there are reasons for that. Paolo Dalla Corte says that one of them is you are having less risk of having channeling because it's a smaller diameter deeper basket. 
And the other one, the distribution of the water, it's more even. So it makes sense, but um, we will go through it in a few moments. Okay, so first of all, it's important to say that uh, coffee extraction itself, it's, it, could be, it could be very dramatic or it could be super pleasant um, because there's a lot of chemical reactions going through. But I think I've been honest with myself by saying that I like the flavor to be my guide normally. I, I have all the data, I have the scales, I have uh, the, the, the rows development, everything is there. But at the end of the day, the palate is what has to be happy, right? I mean, it happens very often that we hit the spots in yield, in percentage, in this and that, but then we try and it's like, eh, it's good, but it's not my favorite one. Um, so I normally try to be uh, honest with the, with, with the flavor as my guide whenever I am dialing in new coffees or new origins or processes. Especially nowadays that we have uh, this anaerobic, you know, carbonic maceration, 500 hours. So they're very delicate flavors. You need to, you need to be aware of that. But let your, your guide be your flavor and your perception itself. That's my first advice. And of course, we are talking about coffee as a fruit. It's a, it's a fruit, actually. So it's, it's very obvious that it will change depending on the weather of the room, the weather outside, the time it has been roasted, the time it has been grounded. So there's a lot of variables. The technique of the barista, uh, the varietal, the origin, the terroir, there, there are a lot of things that you need to consider before you dial in your coffee, um, which make even more interesting the extraction itself. Um, so before you start experimenting, uh, it's always nice to know what you are drinking, where does this coffee come from, who was the producer. I think it's very honest to, to give that respect to the people that work hard for it. Uh, I have to say that Mexico, for example, half of the country is able to produce coffee. Not all of them, it's a specialty. Um, but it's, ve it's, it's probably my, my favorite part of the season when it's harvest and when, when you can go and see how the coffee it's been processed, how the coffee it's been uh, drying, the colors of the landscapes are just beautiful. Um, and it's a lot of work behind that. So we try to not overwhelm the consumers about this, but at least aware them that what they are drinking comes from this place, was processed this way, and the idea of the profile is gonna be something similar to this. And I think it, it's been working so far in Mexico. Even though our consumption is super low, I think now we are about, uh, about to be two kilos per, per person, per capita, which is it, it's, it's just nothing for being a producer country. Uh, just to give you an example, I think uh, Scandinavia, F Finland, Denmark, and Switzerland, they do like 10 kilos per person per year. A lot of coffee. Uh, but that's what, what really ashamed me. It's in Mexico, most of the consumption still nowadays, it's soluble or instant coffee. And uh, actually, we've been in, in some fincas with producers that are doing very good coffee. And they say, okay, so you want to have a coffee? Yes. So we go to the kitchen and they have a can in the middle of the table. And uh, it's like, there's, I mean, there, there are producers that they didn't haven't tried their coffee actually. And it's still happening. 
But anyway, let's go to uh, more interesting things. <laughs> um, so the first factor, and the one that probably we need to set first, it's the brewing temperature. And I remember when I first started to work with uh, Paolo and with the team of Dalla Corte, they were very obsessive about the temperature. And I was wondering, it's really one degree making a big difference on the final resort? And I was surprised because actually half of the degree can make uh, an impressive impact on the final cup. Normally, as you might know, espresso, we tend to brew it between uh, uh, 90 to 95 degrees Celsius. I don't know Fahrenheit, but um, with, with Dalla Corte equipment, you can actually brew in 88, but it's not going to be that balanced. Overall, what I've been finding is that brewing hotter results in higher extraction yields and brewing with less temperature, let's say from 90 to 88, will extract content, content at a slower rate. So this is the first key element. Um, you have to make sure your temperature is constant during the whole process. And to, be, to do that, you need, uh, now I think now brewer temperature, it's more accessible in most of the coffee equipment. It's one of the variables that now we can basically go into the menu and fix it, and then it will be it would replicate it without problems. At, on, on, I consider probably 80% of the machines can do it now. But 10 years ago, it was, it was a whole new world. Um, for example, WBC, which is the World Barista Competition, two years ago, they changed the rule, and now they let the barista choose which temperature they want to brew their coffee. When I was doing that things about competing, the temperature was fixed. And it's OK. I mean, you just need to calibrate your coffee with that temperature. But now it's funnier and it's more complex to let the barista explore the coffee and have a better result and showcase what they really want about the coffee they are brewing and presenting in a world stage. So, so now it's more flexible. And I am very happy that uh, specialty coffee are really looking forward to give the baristas more variables to play with and to have more knowledge about the coffee they are brewing. Um, but sensory-wise, when you brew hotter, normally you tend to have slightly bitter flavors. Probably the body is going to be very round and heavy, but the finish maybe is not that clean. And if you brew with cooler temperatures, probably you will emphasize not the acidity, but maybe the sourness of the coffee. And it's, I'm talking about a few degrees only. Um, so what I do normally when I set and when I start, I start from 92 and I try. And if I consider that the coffee needs to be more, uh, I need to extract more about it, I think I will go up. And to be honest, in our coffee shops, we are brewing coffee somewhere between 92 and 94 recently. And that gives us a very good balanced cup. The synergy between acidity, sweetness, and bitterness, it's good. Um, but this is a variable that now it's super accessible and easy to play with. But let's go to the fun one. And I consider this as the holy grail of the baristas nowadays, the flow profiling. It's very easy to understand if you consider that it's just the amount of water that comes out from the screen shower um, through the coffee cake. 
But flow rate, it's a variable that can really impact the final result and can really showcase probably the most beautiful espresso or probably the worst espresso you would ever have. Just for you to know, a standard espresso machine has a flow rate between 10 to 12 grams per second. That means that every second you get out of the, of the group head from 10 to 12 grams of water. I think it's too aggressive, especially with these single origins, medium to light roast profiles. You will burn the delicate flavors immediately. So, this is based on data I've been collecting. I mean, not at, at a very scientific way, but just trial and error. At a higher flow rate, of course, it's going to be a short extraction time. If you have set your recipe at a 1 to 2 ratio, which is very normal, uh, it means that if you are using 20 grams of coffee, you will expect to extract somewhere between 40 to 42 grams of liquid, right? At a lower flow rate, you have a longer extraction time because the pre-infusion tends to be longer. And it's, it's normal. If, if the water goes softly, it will wet the coffee cake very smoothly and that will take somewhere between 8 to 10 seconds until coffee loses the resistance and then starts the extraction. And at a higher flow rate, you will have a espresso that it's slightly hotter, so the temperature will be hotter at the final result. And the opposite, when you extract with the lower flow rate, the coffee is just like a juice. You can just drink it in two sips. With, without burning your tongue or feeling violated by rough flavors. Um, and I like this graphic because it represents very much what we've been exploring with Dalla Corte. The pre-infusion phase, it's probably the most delicate first part, and it's basically how you present the water to the coffee. I highly recommend to be very subtle and passive at the beginning to avoid the dark side of the coffee, which is bitterness, sourness, uh, uh, burnt flavors. Um, and as soon as the coffee is wetting and expanding, because it happens inside the puck, you will have the extraction of you know, the, the acids, the sweetness. Probably you need some bitterness just to get the balance, but not that much. I've been doing some, actually yesterday, we went to a, a very nice test. I will talk about it um, now, actually. I brought some coffees uh, that I roasted at our roastery, of course. Um, from Oaxaca. It's a black honey process. It's a geisha variety. As you might know, it's super delicate. Uh, we, as a judges, normally say it's like a tea-like coffee because it's very subtle. Um, we use a standard radio of uh, 20 grams of coffee with 40 grams out, 42. There were fixed parameters, 93.5 degrees at nine bars. The time was depending on the flow, so it wasn't really the same all the time. Um, the, we, we mentioned it before, the lower the flow, the higher the time. The higher the flow, the, the shorter the time. And we used the brand new model of Dalla Corte Actually, it's the first time it's launched in the United States. Uh, the model is zero. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an airplane. You can, you can have a lot of fun with it. Uh, and I use pretty much the same technique during the whole exercise. And this is what happened. 
So we started from uh, the traditional standard flow rate, which is nine grams per second. Um, in the first setting, the coffee was good, but it was very bright, slightly pungent. Uh, you know geisha, normally it, it, it's probably the most strong genetic varietal of coffee that we have. No matter if it's from Jirgachev or from Panama or from Mexico, normally geisha has this white flower flavor, jasmine, orange blossom, citrus acidity, it tends to be very juicy. Um, some hints of Earl Grey, um, but it could be too much. And in this case, with nine grams per second, we have a lack of sweetness, we have a bright pungent acidity, we have a short black tea flavors, and the finish was slightly dry, and the body was from medium to, to low, slightly hashy, I remember. So the flow rate didn't work for this for this coffee at nine grams per second. And then we tried with seven. And with seven, we have a better experience. Uh, we have a medium to high sweetness. It was a bright citric acidity, tea-like and grapefruit bitterness. I mean, grapefruit, it's nice, but it tends to have a bitter ending. And you don't want that with a geisha and with a coffee. The body was better. It was medium, but still slightly dry at, uh, at the end with a long aftertaste, not necessarily pleasant. And then we move forward to a five grams per second. And I think this is probably my favorite in terms of balance. And when I say balance, I want synergy between acidity, sweetness, and bitterness. If these three elements are playing together, I think you have, you have something going on. So it was a full synergy between acidity and sweetness, intense mandarin flavors with white flowers, very creamy texture, and the, the, the body was round. It, it, it stick in your tongue. Uh, the long lasting lingering sweet finish was like an L gray tea. If you have tried Earl Grey, it's like bergamot, it's like these citrus sweet flavors. So I think we were doing something interesting here. And finally, we just go lower to three grams per second. And it was very interesting, round sweetness followed by a juicy citric mandarin, a hint of uh, peach or nectarine. But the aftertaste was very short. Uh, slightly astringent with the grapefruit and the tea body with creamy texture. So this means that delicate coffees and single origins and delicate varietals has a better expression when you extract them with a slow and delicate flow rate. And this is a brand new, it's not a brand new, but it's a new variable that now as a baristas we can play with. Um, actually, I don't use anymore any standard flow rate for coffee. Like those 10 grams per second, it's too much. And it's very hard to have a good profile out of that amount of water. Uh, we need to consider the fact that flow rate is one thing and pressure I profiling is a totally different thing. It it goes together, of course, because you don't have one without the other. But Dalla Corte has pay patent, is that properly said? Pa a DFR, they call it. It's a digital flow regulator. And basically, it's it, it allows you to cut a drop of water in four different pieces. So they have full control on what's coming out of the group head and the pressure remains stable. So those nine bars, of course, it has a lot to do with the resistance of the, th that the coffee cake is creating on the group head. 
but the pressure remains stable, like giving you totally control of the flow during the whole process of the extraction. And this is interesting because you can program that. If I was happy with the five grams per second, I can just program it. I can use a button and it will replicate the same development. But if I want to play manually, I can actually, I can start at nine and then go to seven and then go to five and finalize at three manually, which is also interesting for a very, you know, uh, curious barista that wants to really like do all the movements manually. So it was a very fun exercise. Uh, the coffee was very fresh, uh, like for four days. As, as you might know, coffee, when you roast it, it has a lot of gases, mainly uh, dioxide, uh, how do you say it? Carbon dioxide. Um, the coffee needs to, to, to wait a few days to stabilize and to have even extractions. Otherwise, you have a lot of bubbly, you have a lot of, you have a lot of crema, but it goes out very fast. And if you have a very old coffee, it's all the way around. It's very hard to get a proper, consistent crema. But, with, but we, I want to show you this now. We put a coffee that was somewhere between 16 and 20 days uh, of being roasted. You know, those, you know those Italian blends. You don't know what's inside, but uh, normally, normally it's a blend of Africa, Central America, um, roasted probably to the second crack. Um, so we use this coffee. We start with the traditional flow rate, which is 10 grams per second. The cup was flat. The cup was lacking of sweetness and acidity. The body was very weak. And it was only bitter and not much of expression out of it. And then we start playing with the flow. And it was super interesting because we found out that activating the first step at seven for a certain amount of time and then ramping up at 10 and finalizing at five, it's like a, a, a bell. We do, we do like this. And the result was, I, I don't wanna say we make the bad coffee taste good, but actually it was a very decent espresso uh, in terms of balance of flavors we managed to achieve, I mean, a lot of chocolate, a lot of nutty flavors, uh, but very decent and very balanced. So this was very revealing for me. Uh, normally in our coffee shops, we don't use coffee that it's more than 15 days. We have fresh rotation, we roast daily, and we have sometimes coffee at the, at the, at the grinder with three, four, five days of being roasted, probably is not the ideal, but we managed to achieve a proper extraction and an even extraction by playing with the flow. And in the other way around, we found that we need to be passive, we need to be very subtle at the beginning. Um, in order to avoid these this gassy flavors or these this carbon dioxide flavors from the beans that are very fresh. Uh, we do the same. We start with 10 grams per second, which would be the traditional flow rate. Uh, the coffee was okay, but you, you can feel this effervescent texture, the, the sharp acidity just like punching in the, in the very first sip. The sweetness was not very well developed. So we improve a lot by starting the extraction with five grams per second and keeping it like that, 
most of the extraction, especially the pre-infusion, we have like 13 seconds of pre-infusion, which is not normal. I remember when I was competing, I want my coffee to come out at the three, four seconds. I want to see the, the, the tail, you know. But now we, we can play with pre-infusion. It's, it's very interesting to have longer extractions. We can reach to 40 seconds and we can mani manage to have a, a proper espresso. So it's breaking a little bit of, of the paradigms of the 90s, early 2000s. Um, and after that, we still work with uh, seven grams per second. That was the top of the extraction, just at the end, just to let the bright acidity shine and, and not be very pungent. And these are the exercises that we've been doing at, at, at Dalacorte Earthquakes and me on a daily basis with our coffee shops. Um, for me, it was very revealing the flow rate variable because I don't know if it happens to you or if you have been in coffee for a long time, but there's always something new. There's always something happening, either in the field, in the fincas, with the coffees, with the varietals, with the producers. They are doing some amazing and crazy things. Also with the industry itself in terms of equipment, like this technology. And I think it's important because they keep us in love of what we are doing. They keep us like passionate about what we are doing. Otherwise, I think we just go with the flow and it's not good for the, for the industry, for the customers. I think customers wants to know more and wants to learn more. But everything comes out from an experience. If the experience in terms of hospitality, it's, it's overwhelmed, sometimes they don't come back again. But if the experience goes in, in, into the coffee and they want to share their experience, I think we, we hit some new customers because Next time they go, it's like, okay, so what's new? What do you have on the grinder? Uh, what coffee I'm gonna try? So I think this is important for having people happy, but also keep the passion alive of what we are doing. So now you can brew fresh coffee. Actually, we brew coffee right from the roaster with a very smooth flow rate, and the coffee was tasting very, very good. Um, and the other exercise that was also very interesting, it was from the roast. The light to medium roast with a traditional 10 grams per second. It's fruity, it's sweet, but the acidity was very sharp. Um, overall, we have this sourness, which is not good at all. And we also change it for a passive flow rate. We started with five grams per second, and then we ramp it up to seven just at the end, just when the blooming is finished. And what we got was more aromas, what we got was a decent balanced acidity, more into the citrus part of the flavors, but very pleasant. I mean, this is my kind of roast. Normally, we don't go to the second crack. We never went to the second crack. We roast coffee because we want the coffee to taste like the origin, like the process. We want to respect the producer, and we don't want to burn all that work. But just in case you have a dark roast, it's possible to achieve also something interesting. Um, so we did also start with 10 grams per second, which is the traditional flow rate. Um, and quickly, after eight seconds, we go down at five grams per second. And we achieve a very well-balanced coffee. Of course, it's more into the dark flavors. Uh, uh, I don't find much of 
expression, but it's cacao, maybe it's uh, uh, nutty. Um, but the mouthfeel, it's very round. And the sweetness, the dark sweetness, it's there. So it, it's a super interesting variable to play with. Um, my idea for this conversation was just in case you have time and you feel like we have two machines connected downstairs at the hall where we will have fun and we can like all this theory and all this to really see how it's going on and what's the taste. I've been very surprised by the the mouthfeel of the coffees, you know. I like espressos that you can drink it immediately and you can have a good expression of flavors. I like that the aftertaste is clean, it's round, it's smooth, uh, and makes me feel like want to give another sip to the coffee. So the idea is if you have the time and the willing, we will be brewing coffee downstairs. Not only the coffee that I brought, which I highly recommend, because I brought the third place of Cup of Excellence in Mexico that just happened last month, uh, um, the announcement. Uh, I also brought that geisha. I also brought a, a pink bourbon and, and da da da. But I, we also found some very good local roasters from San Antonio. And the idea is to showcase the local scene and to see how the coffee is tasting of what normally the San Antonians are drinking. Um, so I'm very happy that the science has like pushing coffee towards definitely some new dimensions. Um, we as a baristas like to be very consistent with everything that we can, all the parameters that we can control. We will be very happy to do it. Because we can rely on what we are serving and we can use that time to interact with the customer and to have more people involved in the specialty coffee scene, which is our main goal, at least my goal in Mexico. Uh, so basically, that's what I've been doing. And I will be very happy to see your faces at the booth, I think, is 500. Uh, it's the first time we have this machine in the United States. It's working super, super good. Um, and we have set three different groups with three different parameters. No, no, no. Parameters are fixed, but the flow is different in each one. So we can really see the impact on each scale. Uh, I don't know if you want if you have any questions or comments or doubts or whatever. <laughs> I think th this conversation needs to needs to go around the machine and the coffee to really round it up. Um, uh, but I am very happy to be involved with Dalacorte and with all what's going on. Dalacorte is slightly new in the United States, but it's a very, very high-end machine that it's been on the world since 2001. Uh, it's a family business run by technicians that has been involved in the industry since mid of the last century. And they are working very, very well developing equipment that it's showcasing better coffees every time. So that's it. I don't know if you have any questions. Just feel free. Otherwise, I see you downstairs. <laughs> Thank you.